Okay, so it is late November now, mid-November now. It is November either way. So this is the real transition in bass fishing. So I'm going to show you which rod I use for this time of year. So a lot of people act like the fall transition happens, you know, early October, late September, or even in October at all. And down here in this part of the country, at least, it really does not happen until you get into really November. And I can really tell a difference in the way fish are relating to the bank or relating to cover now that I could just like two weeks ago. So this is the major, major transition. And I'm gonna tell you more about the strategy of how I attack this time of year more than just the baits. Everybody else wants to tell you about the top five fall baits and yeah, that's all the glamour stuff like that. But the initial strategy and how to find the fish is how you're actually successful in the fall. So I'm gonna discuss exactly how I target the bass and I will also show you the baits that I use. The main thing I always try to do in the fall is cover a ton of water. So start out early in the morning or pretty much all day, I will throw a top water bait. So this whopper plopper, I've been throwing it a lot recently. It just sounds kind of weird to say whopper plopper. Doesn't sound like an actual bait that's gonna win as much money as this thing wins, but the whopper plopper catches big fish. So that's one of the baits I start off with. We fish a lot of uh, seawalls, some transitioning rock bank, anything that really, really seems to have a hard edge to it that you throw a top water beside, this thing just really seems to draw them. I don't know if it's like the echo off of the hard surface, but the surface beside it, like a seawall or something, but man, it just seems to draw big fish from a long way away. So I will throw this thing literally all day and I use this when I'm really, really covering water. I always am looking for bait and I'm looking for big transition areas. Anywhere that goes from pea gravel, sand, small rocks, chunk rocks to a bluff, or any kind of a pea gravel sandy bank that comes to a seawall but that's beside some docks, those kind of areas I'm gonna pull up to, I'm gonna throw a whopper plopper to it really quickly and try to catch some fish off of it. Now, usually I don't have a day where I catch 30 fish on a whopper plopper or a buzz bait or anything like that. Usually this kind of uh, fishing, I'll catch eight or 10 fish a day. Now, if you wanna catch a ton of fish in a day, you're gonna have to transition over to something like a crankbait because these fish like to sit up a lot of times in the fall a little bit deeper, a little bit isolated, and really, really ambush this shad. So you'll find a point that sticks out into a pocket or something like that, and there'll be a ton of fish all sitting there. And I mean, I've had days in the fall where you absolutely blister them throwing a square bill crankbait. So this is the rod I throw it on, seven foot, medium, moderate. It's a composite rod, which that's all the fun stuff, getting new rods, new reels, new line rigged up, but the location is the extreme key. Same thing as far as here, is I wanna find those transition areas where the small rock turns to big rock, the big rock turns to bluff or anything like that. I wanna pull up, pinpoint that, and hit that with a square bill, and usually you can catch multiple fish off of an area. Now, channel swing banks are extremely, extremely important in the fall because that's what the shad use to migrate around. Now. A lot of people always want to run to the back of these pockets in the fall. And I've had way, way more luck staying on the main river. It just seems to have more flow. If there's a little bit of wind, the wind, you know, is always a little bit stronger on the main river. You know, there's just more open water to get the wind piled up. If there's a little bit of rain, the main river sometimes will get more stained than other areas. So I like to stay on the main river more than almost anybody else that I know in the fall. And then I like to cover a ton of water with this type of bait. If any kind of uh, wind or anything, gets up any kind of stain early in the morning late in the evening you can catch a lot of numbers on this thing now the main reason i pick up a chatterbait instead of a square bill is if i want to skip it around docks or something like that so if we get some heavy wind or some stained water around some of these docks a lot of times i'll use this chatterbait to skip around the backs of it and i can cover water faster than i can with a jig and i really really get keyed on on that shad sometimes so if we have wind or stained water or sometimes they just really get on this chatterbait bite and they want to feed up in the fall so if they won't bite this whopper plopper, I'll pick up the chatterbait and kind of throw it in the same areas. And I also throw it in the same areas as a square bill. But to me, usually, in the fall, the square bill catches bigger fish than the chatterbait. But I always keep it laying on the front deck because I can reach some areas with this bait that I can't reach with the uh, square bill. Another thing is this thing comes through grass really, really, really well. So if you fish in a grass lake like Hydrilla, I grew up on around some lakes that have a lot of Hydrilla in it. In the fall, a swim jig is really, really good, but also if you get a little bit of ripple or any kind of wind, this chatterbait becomes a huge player around that matted grass or the isolated grass, grass edges, whatever it may be, it becomes a big player around that if you get a little bit of wind and it's a little more weedless than most other baits. So basically, in the fall, pretty much all year actually, I keep a jig tied on the front deck. Now, after they come off bed, it just seems like as soon as they come off bed, I really, really stop catching them on a jig. So 
So I, pick, I go to more plastics, more worms, more creature style baits when they come off the bed. I do throw those in the freeze foam, but I do not like to throw a jig in April, May, and June, really. Now in July, for some reason, I always found they get back on the jig bike pretty good to stay on the rest of the year. Now, this time of year, I keep my jig downsized just because it falls a little bit faster. I can cover a little more water with it. And a lot of times in the fall, people get too dialed in on these shad type baits. And you get up there and you'll see the largemouth cruising around the banks. There's still tons of bluegill on the bank this big and the bass are blowing up on them constantly. If you get up there and get up there shallow and cruise around, you will see the bass cruising. You'll see them blow up on small bluegill. So I always keep my jig downsized this time of year. And I like to skip it around the docks in the clear water. If we don't have any wind, I'll throw this around the uh, same bluffs. I would throw the square bill on with no wind. If it's a little bit deeper, a little bit faster drops, I can't make that square bill hit, I'll pick that jig up. Another thing I love to do, whenever I do find them in a pocket, a pocket is where you find the big loads of fish this time of year. If you go back into a pocket and you follow the channel in there, sometimes there'll be a huge wad of shad in these channels and the bass will be sitting there. There'll just be 40 or 50 of bass and you just waylay them. So, a lot of times what I like to do is use these shad imitating baits for that, but whenever I have, you know, the bite slows down on the actual shad chasers, I will find the isolated stumps in the area, isolated laydowns in the area, anything that's kind of isolated close to the shad and close to the school and fish, I'll go to and I'll pitch that jig to. This time of year, I don't use a creature bait as much. I almost exclusively pitch the jig around and I like to fish that isolated wood close to the shad and catch a lot of big fish doing that. It's also a really consistent way to fish. So if you, you can go in any time and the wind could change directions and literally the shad are gone and you can't find the bass. So if you go into a pocket you might have found them in practice in, and you throw all these three baits and then you can't catch them, pick that jig up and pitch it to the isolated wood and stuff like that. So the main thing about this is these baits are not that important. Everybody acts like the baits are extremely important, but in the fall, I like to move around a ton because I'm looking for active fish. I'm not trying to make a fish bite. I'm trying to find fish that are actively feeding. The shad are moving a ton. The bluegill are going from shallow, from super shallow, and they're trying to move out deep. The shad are going from deep, they're trying to move up shallow right now. So the bait are moving a lot. The bass are moving a lot. What that means is sitting still and trying to drag around and make fish bite becomes less productive than it is in the summer or the spawn. So this time of year, the fish are active. I like to move around a ton, stay on those transitions. You want to find where it goes from shallow to deep very quickly. And I'm not talking about where it drops off from 8 to 20. I'm talking about you find somewhere in a creek where it drops off from 2 to 4 and a half. And there could be, a, I mean, 8 or 10 fish all on this break line just sitting there waiting to ambush shed. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for in the fall. And I have the confidence I can throw any of these four baits in pretty much the same exact areas and catch the fish. Just based on the conditions, I'll pick one up over the other. So keep moving in the fall. Don't sit still. Find the active fish, find the bait. If you're around the right area, you'll see fish blowing up. If you go back into a pocket, it looks real stagnant. You know, you're throwing your whopper plopper and it's leaving a bubble trail. I don't like it. Some people love the bubble trail, not me. I like to find active feeding fish, good looking water, flowing water. I prefer for it to have a little bit of color to it. And I just cover water, find the active fish, and that's my fall approach. Another thing is, if you go through an area and you catch three or four, I'll hit that area every two hours or so during tournament day because, or during even a practice day or just a fun fishing day because if you caught three or four fish in an area, that means there's most likely a lot of bait there. They're not moving up to spawn. They're not looking for anything except for bait. So if you caught three or four, the bait are using that area, the bass are using that area. I'll cycle through the same five or six stretches all day long and you keep catching fish because they replenish because there's so much bait in the area. So keep it moving in the fall. And before it gets to the winter transition, these fish have already started making their eggs. They're feeding up. The big females are eating a lot, trying to store it for winter. So this is whenever I like to cover a ton of water, have a lot of fun, and there's some really big fish to be caught while everybody else is sitting in the tree stand. So if y'all like that video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button. I'm still at Pop's house. We've been here for probably five days, a week maybe. We're going to leave in the next day or two. And I'm really, really motivated to make YouTube videos right now. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 54% of y'all are not subscribed. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be trying to post a ton of videos in the off season. I'm super motivated right now. So hit that subscribe button. Give me some more motivation and I will see y'all in the next video.